This is Dan from MSS Endurless. Welcome to the channel. This is Dan from MSS Endurless. I was cleaning out some of my hard drives and I found this amazing video on food storage from the LDS Church, which I'm a member of. So I thought I would share it with you. So let's get started. on worst case scenario I'm a detail person and it just you know I thought well what if there's a flood what if there's an earthquake what if there's a nuclear war what if what if and so I just gave it the worst case scenario I said if we lost all electricity lost all water all power from the city if I was on my own in my backyard could I survive and feed my family in the summertime I would probably kill myself so I don't need a whole year's supply maybe just six months <laughs> But in the winter time, we can survive. And that's the program here. We've got a solar oven for cooking. We've got all kinds of foods that are pre-cooked or prepared or whatever. And you can, with the water storage, who thought that up? Raise your hand. That cool thing back there. You are cool. You are, I am so impressed. I walked in and went, look at that. I'm taking this home and I'm going to, in fact, I'll probably start, can I put it in my book? I'll get your name and put your, put your credit on there because, you know, we all get so much credit for what we do. <laughs> Pay you later, like I get paid. Um, all right. You can survive. That's the whole program here, worst case scenario. I can feed my family 365 days with what I've got in my house if everything else shut down. Now, if everything doesn't shut down, I'm going to be dancing in the street thinking I've got a stove that all I have to do is turn on, the, turn on the heat and I've got running water, but I'm not planning on that. I'm planning on a New Orleans scenario without all the water. We don't, we're not going to get a flood here, I wouldn't think. Okay, the system. In your book, uh, and you don't have to turn to it right now, but um, page, probably the last page there. No, it's not. You guys didn't get a, an index, did you? There's no index page. Yeah, you'll just have to guess where everything is in the book. Um, whoever got the book from me, Get, let's get an index page because there should have been an index page and we'll make up copies and just give them to whoever wants them. So leaders, um, get with me and we'll get that because that's kind of an important page. Um, the system itself is really, really simple and it's what I taught for 15 years, like 10 years ago. I was just teaching this and that was kind of a neat system on how much is a year supply of food. You are going to choose seven meals that your family likes. Seven breakfasts and seven dinners. My husband said, where's lunch? I said, honey, we're going to get up late, we're going to go to bed early, not doing lunch. So if you want to do lunch, have a good time, do whatever you want, but I just do breakfast and dinner. We've got, if you're doing dinner, now you can choose seven dinners, seven breakfasts, you multiply it by 52. There's 52 weeks in the year, if spaghetti's one of your meals, you're going to have it 52 times over the year's time. Okay, 52 weeks times 52. Let's say it takes a pound of spaghetti and a jar of ragu to feed your family. You're going to buy 52 pounds of spaghetti noodles, 52 jars of ragu. You've got a year's supply. Move to your next recipe. Everything in it, you multiply by 52, you've got a year's supply. It's just that simple. Now you know down to the teaspoon of salt how much is a year's supply for your family. My personal food storage has 14 dinners, 9 breakfasts, and about 12 desserts. Chocolate cake, chocolate pudding, chocolate uh, brownies, chocolate chip cookies, you know, your imagination is just about the only thing that's going, and your budget will, will be the time out there, but really there are so many things that can be part of your, your supply. I like soups and stews and chilies because they're very simple to eat, to cook in the solar oven. They're one pot meals, they're filling, they're not real expensive. You just can't have steak and baked potatoes. It's just not going to work. But there are a lot of things out there that you would never have thought could be food storage. So, we'll, you know, in the book, you're going to see lots of recipes, probably 14 different dinner recipes, Parmesan chicken and beef stew and all kinds of interesting things that you wouldn't have thought can be food storage. You are welcome to use the recipes. Absolutely go for it. Keep in mind, they are very basic recipes. My chili may not be half as good as your Grandma Ethel's chili's recipe. So what I'd like you to do is use the recipes to see what kind of things can be used, what kind of things, how to cook them in a solar oven. Like if you've got a killer recipe for chili, go ahead and see how mine works, how much it makes, how long it takes, and then use yours 
to do the 50 times 52. <laughs> so if you're doing your own recipes, on page 21 of your book, when you're doing your own recipes, let's say you're making that chili and it takes a pound of pinto beans and a, and a <coughs> tablespoon of chili powder, you know, a couple of the things that are in there, you're going to say, all right, on this sheet of paper that is, you know what, that's the equivalencies. You didn't get a shopping list either, guys. I'm so sorry. See, I never know what's going to show up. You'll have to make your own shopping list. Start with A, apples, apricots, blah, 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 all the way down to yeast or whatever you have in it. Typical things that are going to be in your food storage. Do it on the computer so you can move everything around if you get it alphabetically out of line and then print it up after you get that. But you've got probably a three-page sheet of all these different things. Let's say pinto beans. You put down pinto beans, you're going to have 52 pounds of, of pinto beans and 52 tablespoons of chili powder for your chili recipe. You're going to go to the equivalencies page after you've got all your all your ingredients from all your recipes on your shopping list. You just, you know, say like if you have uh, salt and the first recipe takes 52 teaspoons and the next one takes 26, you go 52 comma, 26 comma. Every recipe that you put down, you're going to keep a, t a running tally of the salt, sugar, anything that goes in it. When you're done, you're going to be able to add that up and say my whole year supply for all of my meals, I need 487 teaspoons of salt. Woo, okay, you go to this equivalencies page on 21, which you do have, and you see salt says that one and a half tablespoons in an ounce, one of those containers of salt is 26 ounces, equals 39 tablespoons or 117 teaspoons. So you're going to know by that and everything else that, are, that is on here exactly how many containers of salt, how many cans of apples, everything that's on there. This is a pretty concise list of things that go in food storage. So using this, you'll be able to, trans to translate your recipes into cans of apples, uh, tablespoons of salt, or how many containers of salt. Okay, any questions about the system itself? Pretty simple, isn't it? See, that used to be my whole class. I'd be done by now. Um, all right. Make your own menus. I take the little cards because I'll answer questions, and then I get off track, and I don't want to forget anything. Yes, sir? Sister Twitt, if there, is there anything else... I know this is a great comprehensive list. Is there any source like on the computer for other items that have equivalencies? No, because I did those all by myself with my little teaspoon <laughs> and my little cup and everything, <laughs> one by one. My children thought I was obsessed. They were going to send me to a psychologist. And I didn't, because I wasn't doing this at the time. I was just doing my own food storage. So that's just, you'll have to sit down with your teaspoon and your little fourth cup and <laughs> do your own. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right. Where do you store your supply of food? People have come up with all kinds of ingenious things, little tables with tablecloths over the top, and there's 500 pounds of wheat under it, and you know, you'd never guess. You don't have to do that. A whole year's supply for one person using this kind of a system will fit into 10 of the boxes like you get from the cannery that holds the six number 10 cans. 10 boxes fit under a twin size bed. It's perfect. I mean, it just slides right under there. You've got your whole year's supply under one bed. Um, you want to keep everything, well, let's see. Uh, twin size bed, don't store in the garage. You do not want your food in the garage, with the exception of a few items. Wheat is one of them. You can store wheat in your attic where it gets to be 180 degrees. Really, really hot, really, really cold, wheat does fine. So don't think that you have to keep your wheat in the house. Um, sugar, you can keep that outside. Toilet paper, uh, you know, that's about it. Everything else you should keep inside. Don't can baking powder or baking soda. Don't do anything to those. Leave them in their original containers because they tend to blow up. So keep that in mind. Sugar, don't can your sugar. I know it comes canned, but they have to do that for you know, FDA regulations, things like that. Sugar doesn't, get, that doesn't go bad. It goes hard. You get a baseball bat, give it a tap, it's back. It's no problem. Keep sugar, get those big buckets, the big five-gallon buckets, and either line it with plastic and pour the sugar in if you want to save space, or just put the sugar uh, bags in there and then just put the lid on it. And your sugar is good forever. It just doesn't, I shouldn't say forever. Years and years, 20 you know, 15, 20 years, your sugar should stay good. It's wasting money to put it in a can and put a packet in it. It, it costs you a dollar to do that, so don't can your sugar. Um, I know you do that in the one-month kits, but if you're, if you're not going to do the one-month kits, if you're going to do the seven meals, then you will get specifically what you want. 
one month kits you know it gives you a whole can of sugar and a whole can of, of wheat that sugar is just not gonna you know it's gonna far outlast the wheat so decide how you want to do that um, rotation was always a problem I go in and I think I've got 50 pounds of spaghetti here somewhere and it's just not there or things go bad you know you just you go in there and you go oh I didn't know that was 27 years old I have powdered milk that's 27 years old you know what it's still good it was the uh, milkmaid or something like that it's still good so you know don't throw anything out until you look at it and honestly sometimes you'll open something up and it smells bad oats are notorious for that yeah it smells bad doesn't mean it is bad uh, unless it's green and crawling away just you know, put it in a large container shake it up let it air out 90% of the time it will come back it's just taken on the smell of the can so please when you open things don't assume it's bad give it a little time a few days to air out um, let's see the rotation everything that I do in in this rotation system is based on long shelf life I'm all about how long can I make this last because that means I don't have to rotate it very often the shortest shelf life I have is three years and that's potato pearls and powdered milk and quite honestly if you keep it in a cool dark place a dry place it will last longer I have powder, um, powdered milk and potato pearls that are five years old and they're still good sometimes the potato pearls will go a little dark we call them toasted so you know they still taste good yes I know usually I say a cool dark place I'll go where is there a cool dark place in the valley of the sun you know unless you're dead oh yeah you're fine you're fine yep 80, 80 degrees anywhere between 78 and 82 depending on if it's summer interesting that we can live with 78 degree weather when it's winter time but in the summertime we can live with 82 Did anybody else do that <laughs> just me you're gonna be really really hot in the summer and it's okay just you know turn that up a little more rotation back to rotation the process here is you make all your list get your shopping list made up you watch for the sales this is a really great way to do it because when spaghetti goes on sale you go out and you buy your whole 52 pounds or whatever it is that you need you get it on sale in a timely manner and I don't mean in a week or even a month but in a timely manner you buy all your food storage that's on your list keep, keep your list with you wherever you go and when you find things on sale you'll know how much you bought and when you bought it you're going to store in under your beds whatever's under your bed cannot be more important than your family's temporal salvation so take it out and put something else you know put it somewhere else you get your uh, like potato pearls and powdered milk things that have the shorter shelf life keep them in the same area so that you're not when it's time to rotate you're not going through every room you get a little book the little book is your food storage book and you're gonna say um, canned 15 cans of powdered milk in September of 05 and it goes under the bed whatever else you know all goes under the bed and you keep a list Becky's room has all these different things and John's room has this every year say New Year's Day you get your book out you go through it and you say oh look three years ago I canned powdered milk and potato pearls and they're going to expire you know just they're not quite yet but when they get close to expiration I give it the three years because it really does last longer if you take good care of it don't store it in your garage you look at that and you say well I'm gonna to have to replace my powdered milk and my potato pearls because it's been three years so you go in you go to the cannery you look at your list you did 15 cans of oat or of, of potato pearls you go to the cannery you can 15 cans of potato pearls you bring it back you take the old stuff out you put it in your pantry your kitchen pantry or you give it to your children or do whatever you want to do with it and you put the fresh under the bed you now have a whole year supply and once again you've got three years to go because most of the things in the food storage that you have here has a 5 10 20 year shelf life some of it is indefinite hey this is an hour and a half presentation so I'm splitting it up into several sections if you guys would like to see more please leave that in the comments I look forward to hearing from you so until next time this is Dan from MSS Enduralist take care of each other